Amen. 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 Let us begin by going to the throne. Well, gracious Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful to be here today. Lord, we are thankful for this opportunity to gather, Lord, to come corporately, Lord, to worship and praise you, Lord, and Lord, to have the Holy Spirit have its way. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness that you continue to bestow on us, Lord, and Lord, we just know that there is nothing that you can't do, and your word has told us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Then, Lord, we also ask that you continue to show us the path that you have for us. And, Lord, this morning, allow me to speak your word, not only boldly, but clearly, Lord, and let it come from you, Lord. Let it be driven by the Holy Spirit, and let it have your authority, Lord, the authority that you granted when you inspired your word. Finally, Lord, again, we are just so grateful. For there are many that do not have this opportunity to gather and worship and also to be amongst each other in corporate fellowship. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful. And Lord, we need to remember that there are those who are less fortunate to us that don't have this opportunity, as well as there are those who are still persecuted for identifying with your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we ask in his name. Amen. Well, good morning and God bless you, Kingdom Life Christian Center. Let me give praise and honor to the only true and living God. To the members, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the ministries, the mothers. Uh, Mother Strong, thank you so much. She always is uh, so just inviting and I appreciate her making a personal uh, welcome that she does, myself and also my blessing uh, to the deacons and to the shepherd of this house, Bishop Harold Stingle, uh, to the first lady, Stingle, in her absence, and also assistant pastor, to my blessing again to my family who is joining us today and friends. I um, am so appreciative. I was Uh, surprised by a gift that they brought me. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, It, uh, yeah, yes, thank you, thank you. It it, it actually looks a little bit too nice to even use, (laughs) you know. So uh, I do appreciate that, thank you. You know, uh, we should always make sure that we acknowledge when someone does something for us that they don't have to. You know, too often those things happen in our everyday lives and we just go on instead of saying thank you and being grateful for it. And I am truly grateful. Congratulations, Bishop, on your 26th anniversary in this vineyard that you you celebrated last month. Uh, May you continue to serve the Lord as his great ambassador of the gospel. I sent uh, correspondence to Bishop Back on the 23rd of August, still ain't arrived. I'm going to have to talk with my nephew about that uh, (laughs) postal service delivery. (laughs) Yes, I am. I greet you in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Thank you again, Bishop, for extending the opportunity and the invitation to allow me to stand in front of your flock here today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. There are two brothers who are terrible troublemakers. They're always breaking things, stealing things, lying, and making all kinds of general trouble. Parents had tried everything to get these boys to change to no avail. Finally, out of options, they asked their pastor if he would help. He said he would talk to the boys, but one at a time. So the parents brought the youngest and promised to return to come and get him. The boys sat across from the pastor's desk, and they just looked at each other. 
Finally, the pastor said, where is God? The boy just sat there and didn't answer. The pastor again looked sternly and a little louder and said, where is God? The little boy shifted in his seat, but he still didn't answer. And the pastor started to get a little irritated, a little hot under the collar. The boy's refusal to answer. And with his strong, authoritative voice, he said, where is God? And to the pastor's surprise, the little boy, he jumped up, ran out to church, ran all the way home ran upstairs into his brother's room and shut the door, and he's panting. He tells his big brother, we're in trouble. God is missing, and they think we did it. <laughs> I don't know if you know any little boys like that, but. Here are the scriptures that are referenced in the message today is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. And then we'll, we'll do a review, a backup of the chapters 1 through 11 in 1 Corinthians. Uh, Romans 15, 1 and 3, and Philippians 2, 4 and 8. Again, those are 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, the background review of chapters 1 through 11. Of 1 Corinthians, Romans 15, 1 and 3, and Philippians 2, 4 and 8. As we examine the Word of God, let us keep in mind the two universal reoccurring themes throughout the Bible. The Scripture reveals to us of God's reoccurring acts of forgiveness and love. The second is a reoccurring theme of our fallenness and sin. The theme of this message is following in his footsteps. All right. If you would please stand for the reading of his word, for those who are able. And this comes from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. You may have your seats. The first Corinthians is one of 13 letters that are also uh, referred to as an epistle of Paul. And he was in Ephesus when he wrote this letter and it was around uh, 59 AD. The letter involves around the theme of problems in Christian conduct in the church. And Paul had planted this church and he was now gone and he was now getting reports that there was all types of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. To do with this progressive and planted church of sanctification and continuing the development of holy character. Paul had a personal concern with the Corinthians' problems, revealing a true pastor, a shepherd's heart. Mm -hmm. This letter continues to be timely for the church today, both in to instruct and to inspire. Christians are still powerfully influenced by their cultural environment, and most of the questions and problems that confront the church at Corinth are still with us today. Yeah. Problems like immaturity, instability, division, jealousy, envy, and that's just in the choir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lawsuits, marital difficulties, sexual immorality, mm -hmm. and the misuse of spiritual gifts. Yet in spite of this concentration on problems, in Corinthians, Paul contains, excuse me, this letter contains some of the most familiar and beloved chapters in the Bible, and that is chapter 13 on love and chapter 15 on resurrection. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to do a background of and bring us forward to where we're going to 
talk about our text. We begin in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians in verses 1 through 9, and that is Paul's introduction. There's a customary introduction that he does in all of his letters, but in verse 2 specifically it says that, unto the church of God, which is at Corneth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that are in every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. We need to understand that Corneth was a, a merchant, a trade center. But, but prior to the planning of the church and those believers accepting and becoming Christians, they were doing a lot of idol worship. There was a lot of stuff going on. And, and back in those days, and I understand there's still some who practice it now, there was temples who actually had prostitution as part of their worship. Mm -hmm. Not just women, but also men mm -hmm. and children. Mm -hmm. It was something that was practiced. It was part of supposedly their worship service. Mm -hmm. Then we go on to the next point of the division in the church in chapter 1, verse 10, and then also speaks of it in chapter 4, 21. And the facts of the division are highlighted in verses uh, 10 through 17 in chapter 1, the causes of the division in verse 18 and 4 and 13, wrong conception of the Christian message. This happens so often, and the reason is that Christians, believers, we're not in our word. So that's why somebody can come and stand, or you can hear it on the radio, you can hear it on YouTube, or you can hear it wherever they're trying to podcast telling you something that is not in the Bible, is not in his word. Mm -hmm. Or they take a part of the word and they twist it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they put their own spin on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, 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 you know, not stepping on anybody's toes, but you know, all your prosperity messages right, and people right. that, that do that, mm -hmm. that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yes it is. Okay. But there'll be a judgment. Also, the wrong conception of Christian ministry and ministers. Okay. Too often now, our Christian ministries and our ministers, unfortunately, are not in a situation where they are seen for who they are. Thank you, Bishop. Appreciate that. That could have been an accident waiting to happen. No, 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 sir. We go on then also the wrong, wrong concept of Christians. See, too often what ends up happening, and I can share experience that just happened with me the other day when I was working at this event and volunteering, and, and I was setting out these giveaways. And they were for everybody and anybody to take. And as we were setting them up, the, the, the actual event hadn't started yet. But there was this family who were there already, and they came and they started taking items off the table. Well. I was just a volunteer, but the person who was supposed to be the coordinator and all over this was really nowhere to be found. But it was a giveaway, right? It was free, so have at it. However, they weren't supposed to start, and pastor came out, Pastor Stan Parker came out and said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, we're not ready yet, this isn't started yet, you know, and he tried to persuade them to, to wait and hold off. At one point, this lady, because we had set out a number of items all on the table and we weren't going to duplicate putting the same items all on the table, we started putting them behind us. She then turns around and then accuses us of putting stuff in the back for us later that we weren't allowing them to have access to. As I tried to explain to her that, ma'am, no, that's not the case. There, there's already items that are here on the table, and we're just not trying to duplicate having the same thing, but we'll replenish it as they're gone. She, you know, <laughs> used some colorful language. Uh, this is the same person that got there and was, hey, Pastor, God bless you, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> James talks to us about, about that mouth and that tongue and how can you have blessings and curses coming out of the same thing? How can you have fresh water and salt water coming out of the same thing? <coughs> you cannot. <coughs> Excuse me. Exhortation to the end of the divisions in chapter 4, 
14 through 21, and the moral and ethical disorders in the life of the church, chapters 5 and 6. <laughs> the laxity in the church discipline, chapter 5. Excuse me. We need to be sure that we're just not coming to church on Sunday and we're not working just on Sunday. One of the things that my father used to share with all of us, that if you see something that needs to be done, do it. Okay. He used to really talk to my brother and I about, you know, we come in the kitchen, we see that there's trash that needs to be taken out, mm -hmm. take the trash out. Mm -hmm. If we see that the floor needs to be swept, sweep the floor. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things that I've continually carried on in my life, and I'm surprised at the number of people who walk by things. Mm -hmm. I'm especially surprised that someone can see some trash on the floor of God's house and walk by and not pick it up. Now, I have to admit that sometimes the world gets in me, I, I start thinking, man, I wonder what their house looks like. But that's not for me to do that. But if you go and walk past some trash that here is in God's house, what does that say about what your house looks like? We need to be disciplined. Lawsuits before non-Christian judges. And we need to understand in chapter uh, 6, 1 through 11, you know, there's a time and a place, but we need to try to resolve them, especially between us, Christian brothers and sisters. But when we deal with those who are out in the world, we still need to practice our faith. Yeah. We still need to make sure that they see that there's a difference on how we deal with things and how they deal with things out in the world. Chapter 6 also in verses 12 through 20 talk about the sexual immorality that's going on. It's just so confusing nowadays. I, I, my nephew and my niece and, and, and my great niece and great uh, nephew who were here, he was on the drums and she had to go to work. This is, this is times that, that it is just so confusing with all of the acceptable identities that we have now and that if you're not embracing of everything then there's something wrong with you yeah, okay yeah. brothers and sisters of Christ let me tell you something you just be offending mm -hmm. but this stuff is not a God Amen. okay God's word is very clear mm -hmm. he tells us those things that we should not be involved and engaged in Amen. I'm not saying that we should be judgmental I'm not saying that we should be throwing stones, okay? You know, leave that, leave them on the ground. But that does not mean that we should be accepting and accommodating. It does not mean that when it's brought in square in front of you, that you don't say, you know, that's wrong. So you have a choice and decision that you make, but that's, that's, that's not right. That's not a God. I still love you. But the actions, that's not right. That's not of God. Sometimes that will be accepted. Sometimes it won't. But that's not for you. God will work it out. Chapter 7 talks about instruction on marriage, general principles. I really don't need much instructions on marriage. I get those from my wife. <laughs> on the problems of the married, chapter 7, verses 8 through 24. And the problems of the unmarried, chapter 7, verses 20. 5 through 40. And then chapter 8 of 1, and, and also we talk about the instructions on questionable practices. Chapter 9, the principles involved in those. Chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 8, the principles involved in those. Chapter 9, the principles illustrated. And a warning about the history of Israel, chapter 10, 1 through 22. Now, if nothing else, that you spend time in this word, if you spend some time in the Old Testament, you will find out what not to do. All you got to do is just read what the Israelites did and then don't do it. Okay? They, they just couldn't get it, you know? And then finally brings us to our scripture verse today of 11 and 1, following in his footsteps. Be followers of me. 
imitate my example in the matter now under discussion, okay? As I deny myself, as I seek to give no offense to anyone, as I endeavor not to alarm the prejudice of others, but in all things to seek their salvation, so do you. We, we should be trying to make sure that our walk is something that they see there's something different about her. There's something different about him, yes. and and, and want to know what it is. Mm-hmm. Your your walk in itself can be the best evangelism that you can do about your relationship that you have with Christ, Amen. and just how you live your everyday life, mm-hmm. and just how you handle things that that go on. I was at Home Depot, and it, 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 they don't have to do it now, but, but and I, I don't know if they did this down here, but there in Michigan, the, you, you had to wait outside in the store. Mm-hmm. And they had, you know, X's on the ground where you had to stand, and, and, and you had to, to do that. And, you know, I'd been waiting in the line along with a number of other people for quite some time. And this lady, she comes walking up, and she walks up in front of us. And actually in front of me. And you know what? That's okay. For me, it was okay. But it wasn't okay for the guy that was behind me. So first, he said to her, you know, the line starts back there. Okay? Of which she didn't respond. And so then he said, well, I guess you're deaf and you can't see but the line starts behind us, okay? And so at that point, the brother's escalating, and I say, you know, brother, you know, we just have to love people where they are, you know? It's not a big deal. And you stepped in front of this man who's been waiting in line, and you need to go to the back. So now he's standing beside me, okay? So he's already broken the six-foot barrier. Now I guess we are now together compadres on this issue that he is taking for me that I'm okay with, okay? Because I don't know what's going on in here, but in Michigan, we got some crazy folks up there that you can't even say to them, you know, you need to have a mask on because things go way left, okay? So... You know, hey, you know what, brother? It's okay. It's 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 not a deal. Still, no response from her. Don't turn around. Don't look at us. Don't say anything. <laughs> he persists and says, "Why don't you say something to her?" I'm like, brother, it is not that deep. <laughs> it really isn't. One or ten more people getting in front of me to go to Home Depot. Is not gonna stop me from getting in Home Depot and get what I need to go, get what I need to get, and going about my business. Okay, I put no energy in this situation. I give no power to this situation. I am in control of what I do and what I say. Amen. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate that you're upset and you're championing this for me. But really, it's okay. It's okay. Do you know that this guy was so upset that he left the line? He left the line. So now I'm worried. See, because I know y'all ain't got folks like this here in Ohio, but Michigan, we got folks that go to the car to get stuff. So now I'm watching him, because I might need to now use her for a shield. I mean, she stepped in front of me, you know, I mean, she put herself in that position. It's got to be there, you know, because they don't have names on them, and it was for you anyway, you know. It didn't have any, we were cool, so, but, um, yeah, he, he, he left the line. See, he, he's, he's all of the world, and, and, and those are situations that we need to be sure that we stay in where we are and who we are. And then remember this, both of them are the image of God. Sometimes people don't display the image of God very well, but they're still the image of God. And we need to remember that. 
even as I also in, am in Christ. I made Christ my example, for he is my model in all things, and if you follow him, follow me as far as I follow him, go and you will not err. This is the only safe example, and if we follow this, we will never go astray. We will never go astray as long as we continue to follow Jesus. Can you remember the first time that you tried on some grown-up shoes? Maybe it was your mom or dad's or grandma or grandpa, an older brother or sister. Of course, the shoes were too large, too big for your feet, but you still tried walking in them. You, you, can you recall doing something like that? And my grandson, Josiah, he would often put on his little bitty feet, my house shoes, <laughs> and walk around the house. Yeah. He was so very confident in walking around the house and content. And then at some point in time, he would announce that those were his shoes. In his mind, and maybe you, then walking around in those shoes thought that you were imitating the owner. Well, see, that is the same attitude that we should have when we're walking in the footsteps of Christ. See, we, we should be walking in those footsteps in the same way that we are able to imitate what he done and how he yeah. walked. Mm -hmm. Understanding that we know that he was God, but he came here in human form, and then he dealt with some of the same stuff that we had to deal with yeah. and that we do deal with. When we imitate Christ, that means that we die to self, and we make sure that we continue to carry the characteristics of Christ. Mm -hmm. And those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, see, we, we have an added bonus that we are also brothers and sisters, but also heirs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. See, we need to not forget that we have become a part of the Holy Family. And, and we have that spiritual uncle, the Holy Spirit, that keeps talking to us and reminding us and telling us. You know, when you get ready to say something, when you get ready to do something, when you, and, and you know it's not right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's not right. You know you shouldn't do it. You know, my wife has gone to bed. It's just me out there in the living room with the kitchen and the refrigerator, and I know I shouldn't have that piece of cake that's in the back on the left-hand side on the third rack. <laughs> oh, yes, I know the location of it and where it's at. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just me and my loathsome and the Lord. <laughs> and sometimes I got to say, Lord, you know I'm willing but it's my flesh, Lord. <laughs> my flesh. Yeah. But she put an extra layer of frosting on it. <laughs> if she just put one layer, I'd be all right. Yeah. But she put two. <laughs> Paul continues, followers of me, rather imitators of me, follow herein my example as I follow Christ. What Christ's example was that he too pleased not himself. Every example in the Bible that Christ is talking, who does he point them to? When he's trying to train and encourage the disciples, who does he talk to and talk about? When he's talking with those individuals, those Pharisees, those Sadducees, those people who are supposed to be schooled in the law, he tells them that you have turned away from the Father. The Father has sent me. In Romans 15, 1 and 3, it says that, and I'm uh, with uh, King James Version. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not please ourselves. Sometimes we've got to shoulder other folks' stuff. As Christians, we do. And, 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 and you mothers know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you got to shoulder your 
children's stuff until they're adults. Not that you should, but that's what mamas do. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. I understand we're going to talk about this in a moment, but we need to understand what that is telling us, that that, that is going to be something that we need to make sure that we're looking at and why it's important because it is a principal foundation that Christ shared with them. Verse 3, that for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them and the reproaches thee fell on me. People going to talk about you. People going to say things about you. They said all types of things about Jesus Christ. In fact, these religious leaders, these holy men, plotted to kill him. If you don't see the irony in that and the issue that there's, I, 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 I don't know, but I, I just, uh, for myself, I'm, I, I've, I've not really gotten my mind wrapped around that one. But um, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit at some point in time is going to reveal it to me exactly what that was all about. Because you're supposed to be religious men, and maybe that's what it is, because they were religious men, and they weren't men of the word. The general principle of surrender for the sake of others. In Philippians 2, 4 through 8, it says, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. It's talking about the unity that we're supposed to be having as Christian brothers and sisters. Okay? Unity doesn't necessarily mean that we always agree with what our next brother or sister says. But what it does mean at the end of the day that we can come together and still accept them and work towards whose goal? God's goal and the furtherance of his kingdom. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in the lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Prop up that brother and sister that need our help. Help them out. I can understand where folks can be and are. I in my life, because of choices and decisions that I made, ended up with situations where I didn't have money in my pocket. Now, I'm not, I'm not just being facetious. I didn't have money in my pocket. I didn't. There was a point in my life through the just – the, the sheer kindness and courtesy of, of some people that they allowed me to stay with them. So I can understand that situation. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Don't be self-centered. Because at the end of the day, it's not about you. See, I'm just glad I come every once in a while, Bishop, so I can just tell the truth. Then you know, <laughs> people can be mad, and you know, Go ahead and, tell it. and you know, then I can, they can maybe forget the next time I come. So then, where that guy is talking about and that this this. And, all up in my business. That's the word, brother. Preach the word. <laughs> Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We need to make sure that we have the mind of Christ. Yeah. We're following in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Understand what that is saying. It's not talking about you're on the same level of God. No, not at all. But you are striving to be holy because he is holy. Yeah, yeah. Understand what it's talking about, what you're supposed to be and we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Who being in the form of God, pardon me, but made himself the no reputation mm -hmm. and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And that's something that we are sorely missing in the church. 
we're sorely missing servants. Yeah. I know Bishop could probably use all the servants that he can get. There should be new people and faces coming to this body every week only because what you've done and your walk. Yeah. I need to find out where they go. What are they getting? How can they have that presence? How can they have that demeanor? How can they act and behave the way that they do? Where are they getting that? There are things that need to be done here in the church. There are ministries that need your help. We need to understand that as Jesus told his mother and father, once we accept Christ in our lives, we need to be about our father's business. Amen. Amen. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He died for us. There's no limit to what Christ has done for you or I, and there's no limit to what he continues to do as he is with the Father, that he advocates for us. We need to understand that just because we become Christians, just because we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, doesn't mean that we aren't going to mess up. And for you young people, don't get it twisted. Don't think that, you know, that you are so different than your friends and the other kids out there. You are once you accepted Christ, mm -hmm. but you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. Yeah. And I pray that not only your church family, but that your parents are people who are going to understand and remember when. Because yeah. 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 I can't speak for anybody else, but I know that I'm not perfect. And each and every day, the first thing I do is thank the God for this day because it wasn't promised to me. The second thing I do is ask the Lord to help me be better than I was yesterday. Following in his footsteps. Paul refers to the rules therein laid down in which the apostle would have the Corinthians follow him in and as he did Christ. And he sought, but in both in private and public, not just in church, not just in church, not just in church, but around and around church folk and around bishop. That's, that's all here in my notes. But all the time, and more specifically in his ministerial service, to do all the things of glory uh, to God, and not for his own popular applause, or which he imitated Christ, who sought not his own glory, but the glory of him that sent him. So he, who would have them do all they did in the name of Christ, as well as you, in the glory of God, by him, that he studied the exercise of conscience, devoid offense to God and man in doing what a follower of Christ would do. In his holy nature and harmless and inoffensive conversation, he was so expectant that they should likewise be blameless, harmless, and without offense until the day of Christ. Yeah, yeah. You Corinthians, you Kingdom Life members, you Christians, Paul is conveying even though I walk in faith before you, it wasn't about me. It was about Christ. Amen. I was following his example. If you ask or if you're asked for your shirt, in the word tells you to give them your coat. If you're asked to walk a mile, walk two. Yeah. If you struck on the cheek, turn the other one. Yeah. It depends on who it is, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. 
Remember that old saying about sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Words leave scars. And here's what I alluded to earlier. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you remember, that was Jesus said that it was one when he was challenged by these these so-called people of God about which of the commandments were greater. He told them that, you know, the first one, y'all just, you know, you you got a judgment coming because you keep putting something in front of God because he's been very specific. He didn't told you that he's a jealous God. Don't put any other guys before me. Don't be worshiping no other idols. And y'all just don't get it. So y'all going to hell. So just understand that. Okay. But the second thing he said is that you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. And so here's what one of the principal issues and problems with that is, is that because some of us, beloved, don't love ourselves. See, we, we, we can't give something that we don't have. You know, you, 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 you are in a position where you, you maybe want to, and you may even be challenged to by the Holy Spirit, but, but, but you can't because you don't have it. You've been convinced by somebody in the world that's been telling you that you don't measure up. You don't have worth. You don't have value. They are measuring you on a standard that is not God's standard. And you've bought into it. And we need to stop. God loves you for you, right where you are. No strings attached. He strives to please men in all things, lawful and different, wherein he copied after Christ, who by his good nature and courteous behavior and humble deportment sought to please and gratify all with whom he conversed. We're supposed to get along with everybody to the best that we can. And when you get to that point where you see that you can't do that, that's why God gave you two feet. Move. Leave. So he would have them not to mind high things, but condescend to men in low estate, where very often we find ourselves doing that, looking at someone's situation and circumstances, not knowing anything about them, and making a judgment of what we think is going on with them. Becoming all things to all things, that they might again, some that he did once more, that he sought not his own pleasure and advantage, but the salvation of others in the imitation of Christ who pleased not himself, but took him and bore cheerfully the reproaches of men that he might procure good for them so that the apostle suggests that it would be right in them not to seek to have their own wills and everything, but rather to please the neighbor for good to the edification. Remember we talked about that earlier? We talked about that second foundational principle of Christ about loving your neighbor as yourself following in his footsteps. You might be saying now that, you know, this brother has said this and made this continual point like three times. They say that you have to say things three times for people to get it. They say they might hear you the first time, probably hear you the second time, but then they'll finally listen the third time. We're supposed to be followers of Christ. We're supposed to be following in his footsteps. While we should strive daily to follow in the footsteps of Christ as Christians in reaching new disciples, while we should strive daily to follow in the footsteps of Christ as Christians and reaching new disciples, we need to clearly understand that there is a cost. Paul knew this very well, and he was trying to get the Corinthians to grasp this. 
bishop comes here weekly and talks with you and talks about the gospel and he's trying to let you understand and those of you who are reading your word hopefully you are also receiving it through the holy spirit that what christ did came at a cost and if you decide to identify with christ there's going to be a cost Sometimes that cost is losing that significant other. Sometimes it's losing other family, other friends. Sometimes it may be that you have to make a decision about a job. Sometimes it may have to do with activities that you're involved in, associations that you have. There, there, there's a cost. If it's not edifying, if it's not building you up, if it's not also helping you in your walk or your faith then you're going to have to let it go Christ even though he was the son of God even though he was imitating his father he still had to go through the trials and tribulations he had to do the same stuff we did I, I know that there are theologies out there and denominations that you know say a lot of stuff and some say that he was just a man he was a prophet that he was you know what he was God yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a deity yeah. even in human form and he could have at any moment exerted the power that his father has bestowed on him mm-hmm. and taking care of any situation but that wasn't his role Amen. that wasn't what the father sent him to do Amen. that's not your role That's not what Bishop stands up here and tells you what you should be doing week in and week out. Not only were the teaching of Paul being challenged by the division, envy, and strife, and they were reverting back to the immorality. This church had just got out of pocket. He had planted this church. He was there. He showed them. He talked to them. He taught them. There wasn't any reason for them not to know what it was that they were supposed to be doing. But as we do, brothers and sisters, we allow the world to influence us for one reason or another. As Christians, we frequently are tempted to compromise in order to avoid misunderstanding, criticism, rejection, or persecution. You know, there there are some places of employment where you can't even privately in your own workspace pray. And don't have anything on your desk that a cross or scripture saying or anything like that. They can have all the satanic symbols and everything else they want on their desk, but Lord help you if you have a cross on yours. What's wrong with you? But as Christ followers, we are called to live a crucified life, and compromise undercuts the wholehearted nature of the crucifixion. We are called to live a crucified life, and compromise undercuts the wholehearted nature of crucifixion. We cannot pursue the acceptance of the world and at the same time follow the Lord. Until we stand with both feet on the side of obedience, we forfeit the assurance of God's peace and blessings. Although discipline is costly, The reward is great. Jesus promises to confess us as his own before his daddy, before God, as we reach our final destination of eternal life. All to Jesus we surrender. All to him we freely give. We will ever love and trust him. In his presence, we daily live. Are you willing to follow in his footsteps? Are you willing to surrender all? May the Lord.
Lord bless you. Amen. A wonderful message, wonderful message coming to us from Minister Forrest. I tell you, uh, we were just sitting at the feasting table. I was sitting at the feasting table enjoying that good old meal. I tell you, that was a good spiritual meal. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know what? I feel like I could take a victory walk. I feel like I could take a praise walk. Oh, I tell you, wonderful message, wonderful message. You know, I do. I'm shouting on, on the inside. If I can say this, this there was a little boy was uh, at school, and he was... Rudy and he wasn't mind the teachers and so the teacher uh, He kept on doing it so long. So the teacher says uh, I'm using Johnny. I Think that was saying Johnny go there and sit in the corner So Johnny got up and sat in the corner For a while and then after he sat there for quite a while the teacher thought maybe he done changed his mind So she says Johnny are you ready to get up now? She said, yes. She said, well, have you changed your mind? She said, no. I'm, I might be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> so I might be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. You know, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. You know, what a wonderful message. Falling in his footsteps. You know, I, all of us, I said one time, maybe some of us follows our parents or grandparents or somebody's footsteps. And you know, my father called my wife, oh, his wife, baby. And uh, when we was children, he always called her that. And so after I got grown and married my wife, guess what? I called her baby. Why'd I do that? I'm following what in his footsteps. And so a lot of times we follow in other people's footsteps, whether they are good or bad. But it's good to follow in a good footstep. Mm -hmm. Woo. I'm trying to land now, y'all, because I'm floating. Yeah. You know, there's something about the love of God. But I do want to say this while it's on my mind. I thank you again, uh, Minister Forrest, Edward Forrest, and also I want to call you First Lady Forrest, but Sister Forrest and uh, all of you, uh, you know, it's good to be in the Christian family, isn't it? And I tell you, I am just rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. I tell you what, uh, at this point in time, no, let's have a little word of prayer first. Now, you don't have to leave your positions. I just want you to maybe to bow your heads if you want to. If you're not, you don't have to. But there is some people that is sick and afflicted. We have uh, one of our musicians here. He called me this morning said he was sick and didn't feel well. Also, we have some people that works every other Sunday, so we have that as well. So some is not here because of their working. But we all need prayer. And so we, uh, let us pray for our president. I want to say that he would come to his senses. Uh, and set the right and proper example because if you got COVID-19 and whatnot, you should uh, act accordingly and set a, I want to say a, a pre preservative standard 
rather than a, you know, a muncho standing because nobody is a muncho when it comes to things of God or God. And I tell you what, uh, you know, well, anyway, pray for him to have a submissive spirit and a leading spirit of the nation and it be the right way. Uh, being gung-ho in certain cases is all right, in certain cases it's not. All right, so let us uh, think about our loved ones that are sick, whether mentally or physically, some that don't know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, some that is backslidden and need to come back, I won't say in fellowship with Christ. So as we go to the throne of grace, I say, Almighty God, as we come this morning or th this afternoon, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you because you asked us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And you said we wouldn't come without expectations. And Father, as we uh, approach the throne of grace right now, we ask you to look down upon those that are sick and afflicted, whether in mind or in spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch their hearts and their minds and those that are weak, Father, strengthen their feeble knees. Father, those that is going through something right now, I ask you, Lord, to just cover them under, the, under your wings. I ask you to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, I ask you to Look up on those that have mental problems today in a special way. Because we know that you are God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for you. We also pray for every minister and every pastor, every congregation that is preaching and teaching your words and believe in living accordingly. So, Father, these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'm trying to move on, but I'm I'm holding back this shout. I tell you, I'm holding back this shout. Mm -hmm. See, I am a child of God, and I know I believe you are too. But you know, if y'all ever read First Samuel or what King David when he brought the ark home. David was praising God. And you know what? I, I, somebody said, I'm a praiser. Yes, yes I am. See, I, I'm thankful for what God has done for me and is doing for me. So I can praise him without any extra effort. I praise him because his name alone is worthy. I praise him because most of all what I... See, God's proved himself to me. And he'll do it to you, too, if you let him. But he proved who he is. And because of that, and he sent Jesus down to show the way, and he, Jesus said he gave an example, didn't he? And Apostle Peter said he left examples for us to follow. And we are examples. You know what? I done just exactly like Minister Forrest said, and I saw some of our children do exactly like uh, he said, you know what? I guess I was wearing a maybe about a three or four, I don't know, but my daddy's foot was a little larger than mine. <laughs> I guess he wore about 11, and don't you know I stuck that three in that 11, and you know what? I wasn't there yet, but I was what? walking in his footsteps. Yes, yes. And don't you know now I'm still doing that. My father's going to be with the Lord now. And I find myself, I sing like my father to a certain degree. I, why? Because uh, he set the good example. And I can say also, 
about Minister Forrest, me and his father was good friends. And I say, I, I haven't found a better friend. You know, sometimes I get like Jeremiah. <laughs> but I thank God for the Forrest family. Nice people. The very first time I laid eyes on that man, it was just something about him. I just, I don't know, just loved him. Yeah, nice person. And your wife, too, as well. I think I met you all over at a, at a dinner. I believe it was. And also you, too, Sister Quilla. <laughs> Now, don't let me get started, please. Don't let me get started calling names. I didn't call your name, but you, I love you, too. <laughs> so right now, let me, uh, I forgot something. I'm getting ready to now to move into the next phase of our ministry. And so what I want you to do, but before we do that, you out there on YouTube and on Facebook, those of you that, that are watching and don't know Jesus, maybe in the pardon of your sins, maybe you're following the wrong footsteps. So if you are, you can change because there is another pair of shoes that you can step in. And so now, what I'm going to ask you to do, first of all, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I'm going to ask you to repent of your sins. That's what you need to do to Fall in Jesus' steps. You just can't automatically fall in Jesus' steps. There's a procedure which you have, have to, to go, go through. through. And that procedure is to repent of your sins and confess Jesus as your Savior. Now, if you're ready to do that, I'm ready to lead you in what we call the Lord's Prayer. I want to ask you, first of all, are you tired of living the life that you were living? Is things going the way that you would have them to go? Well, if they're not, Jesus can change your situation. He can change that so you can have a change of heart and a change of mind, and Jesus will change that situation for you. Well, how do you step into other shoes, another pair of shoes? You do that by confessing Jesus as your Savior. In fact, you out there, you can, I want to say repeat after me. Now, uh, you can go to Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, maybe down through 13, where it says, those that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I might not take you through all, every part of the scripture, verse, word by word, but I'll give you the general context. And I want you to repeat after me. Now, first of all, you do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, if you don't believe that, well, no use of going through it. But you got to believe that that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus died for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. Now, don't come here telling me that you done done too much that you can't be saved. That's not so. Jesus can save you from anything you ever done or ever will do except blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. But I don't think you blasphemed if you don't know him. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, take you through the Lord's Prayer. I want you to repeat after me, sir. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. 
and rose again after the third day. And Jesus, I accept you now as my personal Savior. Come into my life. Wash me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And Jesus, according to your word, I believe with my heart that you are the Son of God. And I confess with my mouth you as my Savior. And the scripture says, if I do that, I am saved. Now raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now what I want you to do is go somewhere and uh, be baptized. If no, you don't have a place to go, 620 Junction, Kingdom Life Christian Center, come here and we'd be glad to baptize you and give you the right hand of fellowship. If you've done that, you would become a part of the body of Christ. And now you're on your way to heaven. But you need to come to a, or go to a local church that believes in preaching and teaching the word of God. Now, I hope you was listening on YouTube. You heard our speaker say, Minister Forrest, says about don't get caught up in tradition. Get in the Word of God. Read the Bible. Read it for yourself. So I want you to know that if you follow Jesus, everything will be all right. And over here at Kingdom Life Christian Center, we believe in living exemplary life. Other words, we believe in living the life we talk about. If you're a Christian, we believe in living the Christian life. To the best of our ability, do we make mistakes? Yes, but we, we get up again and we start out again. And we don't lay down and wallow. We get up praising God. Ask God to forgive us, and he will do just that. We thank God for it now. Also, I said we were entering into a new phase of our ministry. What we, we do, we set it up on our, I'm going to say maybe YouTube and Facebook. So you can give to this ministry. You don't have to be here present and in present. Those of you, maybe that's out of state, wherever you might be, you can give to this ministry, and this is how you do it. All right, you go to give. Let me start over. Go to gillify.com. All right, there, then you can donate to KLCC. I repeat that, KLCC our Kingdom Life Christian Center. All right, go to KLCC uh, and click the link on the button at the top of your of YouTube. So on the banner. Now that should get you there. Now if you're a little, I'm sure you're a little more savvy than I am about computers. We have a computer technician here that I am glad to have but I he handed this note to me but I think he's uh, more experienced at going through this than I but I hope you got it so thank you thank you thank you and God bless you remember the address is 620 Junction Avenue Toledo Ohio if you want to put that on your GPS uh, every code is 436 Oh, 07. God bless you until we meet. May I would say again.